What's up? Welcome to Wine School. I'm Mike, and I'm here with a whole group of individuals. We got Lee, Brad, Dave, Tim, and Eric all here on site uh, in Arizona, where we're going to learn uh, about what's happening with the Arizona wine scene and uh, and drink some Arizona wine. It's going to be going to be amazing. So, E, you want to talk about our sponsor today? Sure. Today's episode is brought to you by Canela Spirits. Cinnamon liqueurs. Check them out online. They're fantastic. All right, so Dave, Tim, you guys are the stars of this show here. You're making a lot of amazing wine. You want to tell us a little bit about what's happening with Arizona? It's not really a place I think of off the top of my head when I go, hey, let's go wine shopping. So, but it, it sounds like you're doing amazing stuff out here. So. Well, certainly, yeah. You know, it's not intuitive. Uh, we're growing grapes here in Arizona, but you know, it's been happening now commercially since the 70s. And you know, I think it's really kind of started to find its way over the last 10 years or so. Uh, we've got a lot of momentum and starting to get a bit of international recognition. So... We're excited about what's happening. And are the grapes mostly grown in the northern part, southern part, or all over? I feel um, like it's very well, too hot to grow grapes in a lot of Arizona. No, well, yeah, central area, it's going to be way too hot to do that. But uh, in the southeastern pocket of Arizona and up in northern Arizona, the Verde Valley, where we are now, we've got a really great diurnal shift. Um, mm -hmm. Hot days, cold nights, lends itself to get stressed throughout the day, and then sure. lets yeah. those vines kind of relax later at night. And it's producing really happy fruit right now. Yeah, the key is high elevation. Sure. We have that in northern and southern Arizona. So. Oh, awesome. Well, when you say high, what's high? 4,300 feet. That's the, that's at the sweet spot for... It seems to be. That's uh, Wilcox is, you know, probably the largest grape producing uh, area in the state. And it's just that uh, it's a high elevation plateau. Um, and it's all sits about 4,300 feet. There's, you know, slight variations, but... Is that, is that steam? Does that make, no, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just kind of just flat. flat. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, if, you, if you're familiar at all with uh, Argentina, Argentina, there's there's a high desert um, playa or a playa area there at the base of the Andes Mountains. Yeah, can't remember the name of it, but very similar. Just yeah, like for sure. Up here, it's more you're going to find more hillsides um, and a lot more varying elevation. What but, uh, what type of varietals do best in this space? That's really up in the air. I mean, if you, if you looked at our overall, you know, uh, acreage being grown and then the amount of varietals being grown within that, I mean, we've got, uh, I don't know, something like 70 or so different grape varietals being grown in Arizona right wow. now. So with, with, you know, interesting vineyards that are only 30 acres but have 19 different varietals on them, you know, or 110 acres that have 35 different varietals on them, I think to answer that question, we haven't necessarily figured it out yet, but I think there's a lot of people that have strong opinions about where it's going. And, and you grow both reds and whites? Yeah, both reds and whites. We're a bit more red heavy, okay. of course, uh, just given you know the sun. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a bit more conducive, but we do have some nice, you know, uh, heat hardy white varietals that are being produced here. But I think that if we had, to, if I if I had to put my you know, my money on something. I would really lean towards the, the Spanish varietals. Um, well, that would seem like really, it would make sense. Or, sure. uh, you know, Italian varietals, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then that, that in and of itself with those two there, you then lend yourself to those Rhone varietals and it's great blendability within like, the Spanish Rioja area. And, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of a trend that I think I'm seeing right now. But again, it jumps all over the place. We don't, we don't is there is there issues with the trellising as well? Like I, I imagine if it's so hot, you got to wor really worry about the canopy and, and not getting the grapes sunburned. And that you do, sure. yeah, absolutely. Absolute. And you have to, you know, another key because you know certain elements about high desert elevation the grape growing is people don't consider that we're pretty affected by monsoon rains, late yeah. late season, oh, sure, late season sure. frosts, <laughs> which is probably two things people don't. A lot of wash out. Always associated yeah. with, with yeah. desert. Too much know. water is a big obstacle. Oh, yeah. Big so, yeah, canopy yeah. management in the way of you have to protect the grapes from you know, extreme sun, but like keep it open so there's not a bunch of for months and rains and such. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, erosion, I guess, also an issue with the, with the monsoons, right? Oh. Washing well, and your yes and no. I mean, a lot of our soil types, at least in northern Arizona, is really deep caliche. You know, so we've got okay. some really great clay that provides you know, alkaline in the soil, and our grapes are able to thrive in that. But it also provides little little bits of drainage, which is good. We don't want too much drainage because we're in a desert. You know? So yeah, it's a uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, erosion would be a factor, but I don't think that's something we have to deal with for a while. Cool, yeah, and it so, all depends on site selection. Of so do you, you want to talk a little bit about um, the, the specific labels and the products that you guys are working with and those wines? That would yeah. be awesome. Take it away. Well, 
Uh, I, I'm, I'm Dave, and I'm you know here with 48 Wine Works, and that's that's my day job here. I'm the tasting room manager. And, okay. Uh, the goal behind 48 Wine Works itself is uh, you know we actually act as an incubator for up and coming winemakers, uh, kind of act as, as a place for them to come in and produce their wine, and then we provide the retail outlet for that. Um, it's a beautiful, wide open space, a lot of light. It used to be a little bank, right? Yeah, this was yeah, originally the really bank cool. of Arizona. Uh, yeah. It was a bank up until the 50s. We got the original teller station here. We sell T-shirts in the vault. That's you know, awesome. I don't know whether they drink wine or we'll try to rob the place, right? Right. Well, we, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> we only take deposits now. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I like that. Good but, but, you were uh, renting the wine anyway. You don't get to keep it. So. But yeah, so for for the most part, um, you know, it's it's really great for me as a tasting room manager, and I think my staff agrees, and our guests really enjoy it as well. And that we don't have just one winemaker's philosophy here. We've got a really nice collection of individual winemakers and stylistic approaches to that wine. You know, and. From you know really deep old world styled wines to really experimental you know newer stuff and you know it's 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 just a great. Are, are you guys one. are you guys making the wines for the people as well? No, or they, no, they just no. show up with their wine that they've grown and made however they I want. Mean, everything made. everything revolves around relationships, of course. I mean, for, for the sure. most part, we've got these guys and we know that they're good winemakers. We know that they've got a history of it, but haven't been able to actually let their own labels represent themselves. Ah, so with okay. that in mind, they're you know they come in, they produce their own wines, and then. We, you know, from everything, I mean, we don't make anything for them. For the most part, our facility is the equipment. You need the mind and the know-how sure. to produce your product. Okay. But we provide a retail outlet for that set space, which does make us a little unique in the in the whole world of cooperatives because we're not the first cooperative in, ever. We're just the only one in Arizona. But what makes us unique to an Oregon or Washington cooperative is that we are a loyal retail outlet to the wines that are being produced in our facility. So it's a... Uh, it's, it's a two-parter, if you will. So you're you're more the the front end side, and then you're actually making the wines. More well, making right? wines, yeah. yeah. And he's got a great label, Iniqua Cellars, um, one of our more popular wines here for sure. Iniquis, yeah. Iniquis or Iniquis? Iniquis. Yes. 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 So we've got Iniquis, we've got Merkin, we've got uh, Caduceus, correct? And not also, here. Not here. Okay, um, got it. We got the four eight. We got the four eight brand. We got Seculum Cellars that Michael Pierce makes. Awesome. Um, and Chateau Tumbleweed. Beautiful. Yeah. Chateau Tumbleweed. Chateau. Well, that's an awesome name. <laughs> that's great. Good job. Well, let's try some. What are we? What are we going to try today? I'll pour if you want to walk through the kindred there. Sure. Or, sure. No, let's start yeah, over here good. actually. Okay. So uh, what are we? What are we? So this one here is our four eight red. Um, so as a, as a cooperative, when we sell this wine, we're not we're not naming the price. Our winemakers name the price, and that way we can give them back a, a I think a reasonable percentage for sure. Um, but we've got this for it red and white, so that there's a little bit of opportunity to get our name inside people's homes. Awesome. And this is a nice blend of Syrah, Cab Sauv, equal parts, and Grenache, and that's all Arizona fruit. And then we've got some Dolcezzo and Primitivo that kind of finish it off, and that's all fruit from the Luna Rosa vineyard out of Luna County, New Mexico. Beautiful. We had some wonderful dolcettos and barbaresco over here recently. Yeah. Feel free, guys. You're not going to join us? No. Okay. <laughs> He's on duty. Not, 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 not on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Well, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. Thanks cheers. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming out. Really nice awesome. and light, you know, kind of bright, fruit forward. I think it's a nice everyday drinking wine. You know, it's one of those wines that you could pop open and not feel guilty about it. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Nice to see. Real approachable. A broad palette on it. That's right. You don't see too many cab Syrah blends. Again, I mean, nobody knows we're doing anything here, so why don't we do whatever we want? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that there's really any reason and to that's the way you win, any. right? You I, do your own thing. I love that, yeah. frankly. I love so, that. just a, an interesting piece about where that's going in the future. Um, so, there's some, there's Negro Mar, there's a Negro Mar of a vineyard at the local uh, college here that now has a viticulture and enology program. And all of the Negro Mar that's grown on that property is going to be the 48 Wineworks Red cool. after, so this, a, after wow. this vintage. It'll be a nice vineyard specific, you know, wine that you can put together a vertical of. And, and that, that particular cultivar is one that I personally think is fantastic yeah. and undervalued. Right. By, right. By, by, right. Like, when you get a good Negro Mar, uh, yeah, yeah. it's like, wow, this is fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's got a good nose on it too. Well, that's great. So you guys are partnering, if you will, with the wine school. Well, yeah, I mean, Maynard's I, the, yeah, Maynard Keenan does own the cooperative, or you know, at least all of the pieces oh, with okay. you know, the, all the high ticket items anyway. Um, yeah. And uh, he he designed our beautiful tasting room here, but he's a big contributor to Yavapai College, and the I program. I personally was, am a student there, just now finishing oh, up. I've awesome. got another employee here who 
has graduated. He was one of the first five or so graduates, uh, along with his girlfriend. You know, and really tight knit community we have here. But um, Maynard was gracious enough to install the first the first acre of vines at the college, and it's being maintained by Aaron, who is one of the graduates. Wonderful. He's here, um, but uh, with that in mind, I mean, it's that's that's his space. It's his it's his vineyard there. But yeah. he's, he's been a huge contributor to that whole entire program. I mean, I'll, I think a lot of us would be surprised to see how active he is in the, the community there. That's amazing. And I also think as time goes on, uh, the, the college and graduates who come out of there will be eligible to be um, winemakers at 41. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, I would imagine you guys are cherry picking like crazy, right? All the, all the, like, Doing our best. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay. I'd grab one. I just manned up and just finished. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you do that too? Yeah, I, just, I took one for the team, yeah. guys. There you go. That's, That's what we need. Good. Awesome. Oh, game on. I think I what I think is, that, is the, the coolest about this whole thing is just the, the, the sort of wide, wild, wild west. We're right. just trying a bunch of different stuff. Right. And some right. of it's it's crazy and yeah. some of it's going to work and some of it's not yeah and I mean it's been a shotgun approach even from the early days and people are starting to get more focused and you know not only on varietals that are used on here but clones of those varietals as well sure. which is just as important in a lot of ways oh yeah yeah for sure yeah some of the things up on the mountain so right. eventually there's going to be some clones that come out of that that have some really yeah. unique characteristics that you'll be able to Thank tap you. into and that might do better here yeah, yeah okay. that's great Right, so, so this next one here is the Merkin Vineyard Shinola, which uh, is a really, really neat blend. It's all Italian varietals. It's all okay. fruit from the Luna Rosa Vineyard out of Luna County, New Mexico. Um, really like that, that, that source there. Um, it's a blend of uh, Primitivo, Dolcezzo, Rufosco, Montepulciano, and San Giovese. Wow, that's what that is. Nice. Uh, Almost like a Rhone inspired Italian blend. The color is a lot deeper than the, than the cab we were sure. just drinking, which is... Kind of interesting. Well, again, that's a, that was that was only thirty three percent cab, thirty three percent Syrah, and the rest of it was everything else. You know, it wasn't, oh, it's not, okay. it's not a right. cab. Yeah, because cab and Syrah both typically you know a little, little darker. Of course, of but course. So no, that's a blend. I mean, that, and that's a blend it. of a lot of stuff. You know. Okay, so this is all. I love this Do you wine. make this wine? It's fantastic. No, um, I've been buying it. it is, no, it's it's, it's great. most of this has been made. Well, they we process it um, up at Caduceus Cellars, um, okay. Maynard being the winemaker up there. A lot of it gets processed up there, or you know, um, made until you know until dryness, and then it gets transported down to four eight wine works, where it's all bottled. This is wonderful. That's yeah, really nice. Oh, this is this is magnificent. This yeah. is a this is a Wednesday spaghetti wine. Yeah, yeah. Like all yeah. Sure. day. And I would never it's say, really you know what I mean, as a compliment. I'd never say Arizona, right? I mean, I would, I would go. Oh, it's Italy. Wine taste. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You told me this. No, was it's, it, the fruit's a little bright for me for Italy. Mm-hmm. I think if I was blind yeah. tasting this, yeah. I, I would I be confused on this. Yeah. I think I would be. That's fair. I, I don't know that I'd be in, in Italy. I think the, the fruit would really throw me off on it. But because the fruit's right there, right? It's, it's it backed up. It's got some great acidity. I said this is. I, I don't get any oak on this at all. No, it's mostly neutral oak. Yeah. Yeah. This is quite nice. Yeah, I like it a lot. We'll be taking some bottles of that home for sure. <laughs> <laughs> New Mexico red table wine. Wonderful. Just a basic wow. red table wine. That's you great. Know, and sourcing from New Mexico really lends itself to an opportunity to price wine to sell. Um, yeah, I'm sure. And What's a, is what just, is the price on that? That's 25 a bottle. That's great. And this one here is 19 a bottle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, Again, just having that little bit of New Mexico in here was help. Uh, you know, it helped us to kind of drive yeah, that down price. prices. So, uh, Arizona fruit's just expensive to farm, and yeah. in general, it's uh, few and far between. We've got like what 1,100, 1,200 acres of vines fruiting in Arizona right now, and approaching 90 or so different wineries that are all trying to get at that fruit, and that's what drives the price point of, of these wines a lot of the time. Yeah. So, I, for 25 bucks, I think that's, that's a no, great that's everyday still, drinking yeah. wine, eminently quaffable. And you guys ship as well. Can people we do, order off yeah. the website? Okay, um, fantastic. Not from 48 Wineworks. You're more than welcome to go on to Caduceus where you'll find stuff like this. Great. Um, you know, 48 itself, you know, because given the nature of the cooperative, right. it's really small batch wines. You know, yeah. We're not we're not selling online because we do a good job of moving it in the tasting room. Sure. Uh, yeah. But we certainly do ship outside of that. Great. Yeah, if you want to have any URLs or anything like that that people can check out. No. Um, uh, well, you know, we're real active on Facebook. Cool. Website's kind of being built right now. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. But you know, Facebook is really a great. You know, it's been a great way for us to be able to keep in touch with our fans because, oh, cool. um, and we're able to 
be on it every day and yeah. updating it all the time. And so we've got all types of events that happen. Perfect. And it's 4 8 Wine Works. Well, and I would imagine, just given the nature of the cooperative, there's always, it's always different, right? Absolutely. It's a, you're not, you, you don't know, really know That's what you're going to get. If, if you're coming in in June, it's going to be different than if you came in in March, right? right? Absolutely. And it's always changing. I mean, we'll always, the, the one constant is we're always going to represent everybody equally, of course. Of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. But other than that, what of their wines we'll have at that in, at any given moment is going to change, and again, that's kind of a fun thing too. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right, let's bang the rest of these couple things out. What All else? Right, we, what else next? we got? This this is the Kindred project. I'm gonna let Tim kind of take the reins on this one. <laughs> okay. So Kindred uh, Kindred was born. The idea for this was born in 2011, um, and I was actually. Uh, when I first moved to Arizona, uh, I was the winemaker at Arizona Stronghold for six years. And okay. I was sitting down uh, tasting some potential blends for Arizona Stronghold, and out of nowhere, I just I had this thought of uh, of doing a collaboration with other Arizona winemakers. And uh, you know, I didn't the details, you know, weren't didn't come to me, but just the idea of two, three, four winemakers getting together to create a blend. Um, and I actually uh, text messaged Maynard right away just to see what he thought of it, and he loved it. So then, and then the other two people that we knew we wanted to work with would, would, uh, were Kent Calligan um, at Calligan Vineyards and Todd Bostock, who Maynard and I have both developed really good relationships with through the years, and you know, Kent Calligan, Calligan kind of being the godfather of Arizona wine growing. Um, so it just seemed like a really cool idea. I presented it to those guys, and they loved it. And so we made a 2011 was the first version of this, which was a Cab Tempranillo blend um, that I don't think we have any more of here. And you guys, you guys, each each winery made their own. One barrel. Yeah, it was just one, one barrel, barrel of wine, wine and brought them together and our cellars. Yeah, and they just, just brought them together for the blend. The first the first version was just put those together, and it is what it is. Um, yeah. And I, I was confident that it, that it would be good. <laughs> yeah. it, was like, it, was three, it was three barrels of Cab and one barrel of Tempranillo, um, and it was just it was really good. Um, so this was a little more thought out. Um, this is uh, uh, Syrah Grenache more bedroom blend. Um, we thought about it a little bit more, and it'll evolve as time so goes. Exactly. One, one of the wineries grew the Syrah, one grew the Grenache, one grew the Morvet. Yeah, yeah. And so, and then you know, we we're, we have these ideas. The the four people who uh, are doing the red version will always do the red version, and then. 2014 will probably be the first um, white version of Kindred, and I'm, I'm I'm rotating four other Arizona winemakers in for that project. So it's continuing to evolve. A, a neat looking bottle too with yeah. the wax. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you about the wax cool. and uh, and who designed your labels as well. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, they're uh, beautiful. One of one of my very good friends, business partner. His name is Scott Havis. Okay. Havis Design. Wonderful. Um, down in Phoenix. Yeah, they do a great job. Yep. And you don't see this too often. I bought an 85 Mazzi as the year I was born in Italy yeah. uh, for like 50 euro and it had the wax label. We were really excited about oh, that. Cool. We ended up drinking at like five in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's always going to be small batch, so we wanted it to look you know, and feel very sure. artisan. So. God, you're, I'm really getting that that, that pepper on this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this is the a fruit good. really comes through well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not muted in any way. Yeah, and uh, I guess one of the interesting elements of this is uh, one of Maynard's signature wines is Premier Passo for his Caduceus uh, brand, and the Syrah that went into this actually would have gone into that, so he co-fermented uh, a certain percentage of Malvasia Bianca in with his Syrah. Oh. Mm -hmm. so Trying to do like a coat roti kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But with that, that's kind of Premier Passo yeah. is oh, his Arizona version of that. Awesome. Um, using Malvasia Bianca instead of the traditional Viognier. Uh, but you can, even though it's very small percent, you can kind of get it in here. Oh, it yeah. adds a spice and a character. Yeah, there's a spice and there's that kind of silky, of silky tannins from the Grenache. But high alcohol, this mm -hmm. is probably close to 15%, mm -hmm. I guess. 12, 13? I think it's not so bad. Yeah, 14%. 14, 14, 14 yeah. yeah. That'll still knock you out of your ass. But, but not, not, <laughs> you you don't want to get the heat on it, though. Right, right. But you can, you can tell it's there in the back. Yeah, wow, this, is, this is fantastic. I'm, I'm not done with this. I'm yeah. not drinking this. <laughs> Definitely this a little bit more. This is what I buy every time I come <laughs> up. <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Absolutely. A little bit more of an oak profile. So where is this actually this. bottled? This is fantastic. Bottling it's bottling at the cellar as well? It's bottled at 4.8. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. It'll probably always be married or joined to 4.8 in some way. Makes sense. Um, huh. It's a really cool idea too. I hope yeah. this Thank this you. kind of model spreads too. You don't see that very yeah, much. Yeah, it's a, and it's just it's a beautiful way, even symbolically, um, to to marry like two southern Arab. 
And a lot of people think we don't get along with, with a lot of our, our brothers and sisters in the industry, and we really do. Um, and this was another reason to kind of tie together Northern and Southern Arizona mm -hmm. um, relationships. Well, I feel like it's a, almost a little bit about like Arizona winemakers against the, the establishment. Right. right. Us against that. Right. You know, you know, as opposed to you go to Napa or Sonoma, and there are people arguing, oh, yeah. you know, like they, literally they, over the fence yeah. between the yeah. vineyards, right? Yeah. And you're sort of like, hey, Right. We're all in this together. Yeah, and you guys are kind of creating something really special. It's going to blow them away right. when they finally do wake up to the fact that Arizona is a contender in the world wine world. Right. You know, it's a kick-ass. Yeah. It's, it's a great wine. It's, it's, it's a fantastic wine. It's all absolutely. It's, it's also been it's, cool. Like you know, we've done we've done a few winemaker events for this, and all four of us coming together to talk about it. Just it's kind of a powerful message to stand sure. right. you know, arm in arm with other people in the industry. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you're What's the price point? That's fifty dollars a bottle. That's a great bottle wine. That's too good to waste. Okay. All right. So now we're on to the the, the so last one we're drinking. Yeah, this is my small art project that I own uh, with my business partner Calvin Arnold over there. Okay. Um, I've been. I I, I kind of had started having ideas for this project when I was still kind of a lowly seller rat in Arizona <laughs> before yeah. I moved to Arizona. Or and so and I just had this idea of creating a. a a label based more on template than than place, and, okay. and I've kind of carried that through with this, and it will it will kind template of template meaning we're eighty percent this, ten percent this, or five just, percent just, this, just by other places. I'm I'm absolutely uh, I'm absolutely blown away by you know Paso Robles fruit, um, Central Coast, Lompoc area, Santa Barbara fruit. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who's a vineyard manager in Southern Oregon, and you know. I almost start seeing those things as colors sometimes, you know, uh, the, you know, the Santa Barbara stuff being very uh, blue fruit driven and spicy and um, so I just, I wanted to create, create a kind of an art project that, that married um, just the idea, the template, you know, the idea for a template of a wine as opposed to trying to express a place necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so, so, you, so you're sourcing the fruit there and bringing it here and then making right, it, right, essentially? Right, right. Oh, and this actually is the very first um, Arizona Iniquis, um that, that we've done. So this is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon from a southern uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from a southern Arizona vineyard. Um, uh, we sourced the. I think this was the very first fruit from this vineyard okay. uh, for for these cab vines. So um, they're new uh, vines. Yeah. Yeah. So and I loved it and I. I squirreled away a barrel of it for myself. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I like that it's called smoke and mirrors too because I get like a real hit on the nose and right. then it's very mild when, right. you, when you actually taste. It doesn't come through at all. It's really like, oh, I'm going to get walloped and yeah, then yeah. very chill, <laughs> very smooth. I like it a lot. And yeah, not a lot of that, that herbaceous green bell right, pepper right, either, right, right, yeah. which is, which is kind of interesting. Yes. Getting like a little cayenne. A little cayenne. There we go. Nice. Well, this has been incredibly eye-opening for me. I think I've, I've had an Arizona wine before and, and enjoyed it, but I don't yeah. think I, I had as deep an appreciation for all the right. really interesting stuff that's been going on. Amazing stuff. Find you guys on the web. Thanks so much yeah, for taking the time to come and hang out with us today. Yeah, Great. Yeah. As always, we're going out with 30 seconds, seconds of craziness, so check it out. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 I did.